Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect. How are you doing? Let me know in the comments. I hope you're having a fantastic day and turning it into a brilliant one. Today, we're going to learn how to create absolutely realistic and reflective puddles in Photoshop using 3D elements. Now, keep in mind, Adobe has decided to discontinue their 3D features in Photoshop and instead, they're encouraging people to buy their 3D programs which are at an additional price on top of Photoshop. Now make of it what you may, but we're gonna have to skip that because 3D features will not work that well with Photoshop and Photoshop will crash with it. So we're gonna have to find a workaround. But trust me, this workaround is gonna be quick and easy. And I'm excited to share it with you. So without any further ado, <laughs> let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and this is where we're going to create our puddles and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you my friend already know what to do. Now before we even get started, we need to add in the puddle elements. By the way, where can you find it? Very easy. You can find it anywhere on the internet. You can find it on Google. Let's just search for puddle maps. That's all you need to do. You need to search for dirt maps. You can do it. You need to search for metal maps. That is possible. These maps are used in 3D to create surfaces. And we're going to use the same technique here to apply puddles, but with a mask. So as you can see, there are lots of masks available. The one that we're going to use today, I downloaded it from Graphics Crate because it was the first link and in no way, shape or form, they have sponsored this video. So all you need to do is to go to Graphics Crate, graphics whatever this website is, link is in the description. They have a collection of puddle maps create a free account and then scroll down. There are some that you can download for free. So I think that this one is available for free. Just hover over right here. This one, let me search for it. All right, so it's gonna be this one. So hover over this one. You can select this one, download. This is the free version and it's enough, 4,000 by 4,000. It's already high resolution. So you can simply download the free version. And once you do, let's get back to Photoshop and see how we can apply it. So first of all, we need to define the plane and the perspective where we're gonna add the puddle. So let's create a brand new layer and let's go to filter and then vanishing point. Just define this plane. Let's make it a little smaller. Now with the create plane tool right here, shortcut C, simply create a plane along these lines. All right, and then you can refine it. Right now it was showing red, which means that something was not right. So nudge points a little to make sure that it's blue. If it's yellow, it means it's okay, okay. If it's blue, it means it's all right, good to go. If it's red, that means something's wrong. You might wanna make some adjustments. And even if it's red, it will work, no problem with that. But anyway, watch out for it. Now let's extend it all the way. Now what I recommend is extend it a little bit to the right and the left as well so that you have a breathing room for the bumps right here. And let's zoom out and let's extend it all the way. There you go. Hit OK. Now open the map that we just downloaded. Even I'm using the free version. I was pretty cheap, I'm sorry about it. <laughs> anyway, let's just drag it and drop it into Photoshop. Now, Controller Command A, select all, Controller Command C, copy, and then get back to your document. Then again, go to Filter and then Vanishing Point. You will have your plane there, paste it. You already know the shortcut, Control or Command V. Now, once it's done, now for some computers, it might take a little time. You just need to drag it and drop it on the plane. So let's drag it and try to drop it right here. Come on, there you go. Now it's gonna be a little slow and be prepared for a few crashes sometimes. And press Control or Command T to adjust the size. So we can size it right here. You can hold the Shift key to make sure that the aspect ratio is maintained. You can also hold the Alt key together so that, let me do it again for you. So if you hold the Shift key and the Alt key together, it will become smaller or larger from the center. So that is a possibility here. So we're gonna keep it right here, a little bit to the right. You can make it smaller or larger as per your wish. So I'm just gonna make it slightly larger and then take it a little up. There you go. Now, what about the other places? By the way, you can create a pattern out of this, create a long pattern and then add it so that these spaces are not left blank. But since these places are already far away, we're just gonna make a copy right here by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag, just a copy and move it a little bit to the right so that the patterns are a little different. Do it one more time and move it a little bit to the middle so that patterns are not continuous. Do it one more time and move it a little more to the left, just like this. And continue, there you go. Now in this case, that is not actually noticeable, but if you do notice abrupt lines between different copies of the material that we have added here, or any material that you add in future in Vanishing Point, you might wanna consider a continuous pattern, create a long render, and then you add it. So that's all up to you. Hit okay once you're satisfied with it. All right, so now we have the map of how we want to add the reflection. So to save this map, we wanna create a black solid color adjustment layer in the background, just behind it. 
and we want the bright areas to be absolutely white. So on top, we're going to create a curves adjustment layer and take the slider on the right to the left. Now, the right slider, if we take it to the left, it makes the bright areas brighter. So we are not going to lose details until this point. Notice the histogram. Till this point, no details lost. There is nothing there. So till that point, I think that would be perfect. And now you can group all of this, select the first one, hold the shift key, select the last one of the map adjustments that we made, and then press Ctrl or Command G, and you can just name it map. You can use it later, it might come in handy if you want to adjust anything further. But for right now, let's go to channels with all of this active, hold the Ctrl or Command and click on the thumbnail of the RGB channel. It will make a selection based on the brightness levels. So the brightest areas would be selected the most, and the darkest areas would be selected the least. Black areas will not be selected and white areas will be completely selected. With that active, you can click on this mask button that's going to create an alpha mask with whatever we had selected. We'll need this alpha mask later. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now you can turn off the mask. It's no longer needed. Now let's create the reflection. With the help of the pen tool, the lasso tool, the brush tool, you can take all the time in the world to make accurate selections right here all along the curve. But to save time, I'm just going to use the polygonal lasso tool and make straight selections. Nothing out of the ordinary. Let's add a little bit to it. There you are. Now make a copy of the background layer. Just drag the background layer, click on the plus. Keep in mind, we already have a selection active. If we pressed Ctrl or Command J, that layer would only have that area. Anyway, so once you have that, click on the mask button. This is the reflection. Now we need to turn it upside down. But if we do turn it upside down, the mask would also turn upside down. So we don't want that to happen. So we need to unlink the mask right here. So you see that link right there? Click on that to unlink it. Then press Ctrl or Command T, right click on it and then choose flip vertical. All right, we already have this, it's fantastic. Now we're gonna drag it down till this point because anything beyond that, it's gonna create the road again in the reflection. So till this point is fine, hit enter or return. Now we already have that alpha mask. Guess what we're going to do with it? So press Ctrl or Command G with the reflection layer selected and we're going to create a mask of this group. Can you guess what that's going to be? Let's go to select and then load selection. We're going to choose alpha one right here. Hit OK. Those puddles are loaded and then click on the mask button. There you are. Now it's not done, but most of it is already done. That's how you create puddles. Now to make the puddle even more realistic, we need to study an actual puddle. Always keep in mind as a Photoshop artist or if you're into composites, when you're walking on the road, when you're in nature, don't look at your phone, look a little outside. Observe the shadows, observe how, how the highlights are created, look at how the puddle reflections are there and then you can use those concepts and simply apply that in Photoshop. So keep an eye out for that. Don't look at just tutorials, Look at the world outside and how things are actually happening. Anyway, if you look at this puddle, this is an actual puddle, adorable. If you look at the darks, these dark areas have the color of the soil. These dark areas are not completely mirror of the color of the grass above. Even highlights have some soil color to them. Now, it doesn't mean that it's completely monochrome and only soil color. There's actual orange color of his jacket getting in through but there's an effect of soil to it. Now this water is a little bit mixed with soil, so it will have its color, but this water not so much. It still has some dirt, but we can give a little color to that. To apply a little bit of color right here, open this group. First of all, let's turn off the reflection and create a gradient map. Yes, that's what we're gonna use to apply the color. Let's click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose gradient map. And now it's coloring everything right here. Let's turn it off for the moment and now Select the symbol, not this one. Otherwise, it's only going to sample the whites. Select this one, single click on this one. For the right hand side, single click on the color. And let's say we sample this, all right? And for the left hand side, let's sample a dirt area. So I think probably these areas would be nice. Okay, hit OK. So we can use this dirt-ish color. Hit OK for the reflection. So now when you turn on the reflection and now when you turn on the gradient map, have a look. The colors look more nice and it begins to look more realistic. But again, it's too much color, right? So let's decrease the opacity. So we're going to keep it at about, how do you feel about 40? Let's keep it, let's dial it down. Let's keep it 34. Always dial down a little 
more than what you decide to have because as humans we tend to go a little overboard now keep in mind we could make even more realistic reflections if we could use 3d because if you look at their website they have an article on how to use these puddle maps but they have it for adobe after effects and they're using 3d for it and just look at these puddles look at the textures in there they're using the same mask look at the texture it's so nice isn't it and if you scroll down look at the final results just look at this it's looking so good so if we could use 3d that would be even nicer but we can work with that now for additional effects what we can do first of all let's name it puddles is we can create a curves adjustment layer at the very top and take the right slider a little bit to the left to make it even more brighter and we want to make only the puddles brighter let's say we only want to add highlights so hold the alt key or the option key and click on the line between these two layers so that the curves is applied only to the puddles now if you only want to apply it to the highlights double click on the right hand side of the layer and take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right but again it's harsh so hold the alt key or the option key click on the slider to break it apart and take it all the way apart just like this there you go and if you only want it in certain areas you already know what to do select the mask press ctrl or command i then take the brush take a soft round brush and then just simply dab in certain areas with white have a look at the highlight that we added so here's the before here's the after see that so sometimes it helps a lot a little bit here a little bit there you don't have to add it everywhere there you go now on top of that if you want to add a little blur to the reflection that is also possible so you can open the puddles group and then select the reflection and if you want to convert it into a smart object you're welcome to do that let's go to filter convert for smart filter so that you can change the values of the blur later let's go to filter blur you can also add motion blur to it but you know what's more realistic blur gallery and then path blur path blur is way better motion blur is kind of a legacy filter so let's just set the direction to this one there you go and then you can add a slight speed to it if that's your style you can add a lot if you want that also looks nice but it's up to you as to what you want to do so let's add a little bit of speed probably six seven add a lot of taper there you go just adds a slight blur once you're happy with it hit okay that's not too much just a slight one so take a look here's the before here's the after i think it's still too much so you can go back to the blur gallery advantages of a smart object and then decrease it to about six percent and hit okay I think that works and there you go now the placement of the maps also make a ton of difference you can place the maps differently you can make it larger or smaller for different effects so here i've done another version have a look so i've made it slightly larger and the placement is slightly different so depending upon different placements you can create different uh, puddles in different areas all right let's get back to it if you want to make the colors pop a little and this is not necessary it's kind of optional so let's create a vibrance adjustment layer and simply increase it that's all there you go it boosts the colors nicely and there we have our puddles i hope you liked this video so that is an easy way to do puddles in photoshop now keep in mind there are more complicated ways but this is a super simple one i dropped the pen i'm sorry about it and let's do a quick little recap all you need to do is to bring in the puddle map in photoshop apply it on a plane using vanishing point and after you do that just save it as a selection use the brightness levels and save it as an alpha channel that's all we're going to be using it later after that make a duplicate of the background layer invert it and then only apply it in the reflection areas and then create a group out of it just put it in a group and remember the selection that we saved earlier using the puddle maps and apply a mask using that selection that's all after that you can apply some special effects like curves vibrance and then we applied gradient maps for the color and that's pretty much all there is to it thank you so much for watching this video and i would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting pix imperfect on patreon and helping keep pix imperfect free for everybody forever thanks so much for your time i'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating what can i do